We've seen binary classification. As an example where we say, is it a happy face or not? Is it a dog or not? Something like that. Now let's look at an example of multi-label classification. So let's say we have a picture. And so our X is a picture. And our output, our y, we want to know three things. We want to know, uh, let's say, has beard, has glasses, uh, has hat, and is happy. And we're going to assume all these four things are independent. So in this particular case, if we were looking at a Y, this would be, yes, there's a beard, yes, there are glasses, no, there's not a hat, and yes, it's happy. Okay. So our F can be outputting basically Y1, Y2, Y3, and Y4 for our function. Sorry, if these are these are our, our examples, so this is our ground truth, y1, y2, y3, y4. And if we look at f of x, we're going to assume that returns us a tuple, y hat 1, y hat 2, y hat 3, and y hat 4. So our inputs are combinations of zeros and ones. And there could be no zeros all the way to or no ones all the way to all ones. Again, reflecting the fact that these are independent. So this works like you might have, I don't know, labels in Gmail where you can independently set various uh, labels for a given piece of mail. So if we look at f, we might have a function, let's say, if we have some polynomial, right? f might return values where each y hat sub i is, sorry, each f of x is in the range negative infinity to positive infinity. But we actually want to squish those down into some value between 0 and 1. So we are going to go ahead and apply the sigmoid function, and that'll go down into a range from 0 to 1. So our y hats are actually going to be sigmoid of f of x is going to give us our y hats. Okay. So that'll give us a range between 0 and 1. So we know that if we look at our y hats, we might have, for a particular trained f so far, we might have a has beard of 0.7 and it has glasses of 0.9 and it has hat of 0.2, and it is happy of 0.8. And now we've got to decide, okay, well, what's our loss here? Right. So these are our y sub i's, and these are our y hat sub i's. So how are we going to compute the loss? Well, so what we'll do is we'll use the binary cross entropy for each of these, and then sum them together. Remembering that the binary cross entropy is minus y sub i log of y hat sub i plus 1 minus y sub i log of 1 minus y hat sub i. So this one is going to be equal log of negative log of 0.7, negative log of 0.9, negative log of 0.8, right? Because we're going to be using this term instead and negative log of 0.8. So the way you think of it is, right, this is, this is 0.7 of, of, of the way to the true answer, 0.9 of the way to the true answer, 0.8 of the way to the true answer, and 0.8 of the way to the true answer. And so we'll sum up all those binary cross entropies, and that's how we'll get our total loss for this particular value. So you can see if you increase y, y hat sub 1, 
that's going to decrease the loss. Increase this one, decreases the loss. Decreasing this one, decreases the loss. Increasing this one, decreases the loss. So as you're making it closer.